Hello Masoka Universe, back to winning ways and yeah, it's because I posted a video about this shirt this morning. No, I'm not that powerful, I know that, but uh, my ego, my heart thinks, yeah, I trusted them, now they won again. Um, yeah, let's talk about the Milan game before I go to the other games that I watched today. Um, it was a quite interesting first half where uh, I think things were relatively open. It was an uh, even game between Milan and Lazio. And I absolutely love that both teams played in the first choice kits. Um, I love that Lazio kit. It's one of the best this year, uh, for sure. And also, you know, Milan in red and black with all uh, white down below the waistline. That's the classic look and I think it looked pretty cool uh, to see that. I would love that we get more classic versus classic matchups. It's not always possible, but this one really looked nice. I also think that Milan against Juve, they could both play with white pants and no one will really complain about it. Uh, we don't need to introduce the fake black pants here and there. Anyway, I digress. Uh, so first half was really uh, even and I think at the beginning even Lazio had the better of the game uh, Immobile uh, right off the bat with a huge chance that uh, Reina could save and I have the feeling the more Reina gets um, playing time the better he becomes as a goalkeeper. He's still not the safest one but I think overall um, I'm less worried now than I was like say two or three days ago when it really was a little bit odd, what, uh, where I really had the feeling every time the ball comes near the box, there's danger. Uh, that wasn't the case anymore. Uh, Milan's first chances, I mean, they again clawed themselves into the game. It was not the game that they played against Juventus, where they really played well. But, um, you know, you also play Lazio, who are deep defending. I mean, they were uh, a midfield five men deep. Uh, it's not easy to get through there. Uh, then with three defenders and only two attackers on the front. They, they didn't make it easy for Milan. And the problem with Milan is they play with very little speed. And I think this is due to the detriment. Um, it's overall kind of stable most of the time. But a little bit more speed would definitely help them. And yeah, so it was Piontek with chances. Uh, Suso um, again showed that he has some uh, proper, 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 because people are talking about selling him now. He showed his value and actually was motivated. And Jalanoglu uh, played, I think, a really good game overall. Um, except for in the last few minutes, there were some questionable choices, but um, I think I, I like Marcello Noglu the way he's uh, at the moment. He's definitely uh, one of the best players for Milan. Um, and yeah, Piontek had a hard time, but uh, was working hard, I gotta say that. So around the 30th, I mean, Mil Milan had two big chances, but then also Lazio had. Um, I think the draw at halftime was uh, well deserved after the half. Lazio came out again. Um, a little bit more with initiative, but only for a short while. And there was a save that uh, Peperina had to pull. But then the game fell asleep uh, for about 15 minutes until, no, not even until the 75th or something like that. I mean, it really took a long time that there was some exciting things happening. And ah, let's say 60th, 65th minute, that was where I kind of came. It was Lazio hanging in deep and Milan not knowing what to do. And there was, uh, there were, there, there was a scene where all the Lazio players very well in formation and Milan just passing the ball uh, in their defense um, around the halfway line. Um, was not pretty at that point. But then they got it going again. And I think it was around the 75th when suddenly a penalty was given. Uh, where a ball, I think, from Chalanoglu hit Acerbi, who I have, 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 to, have to say, I'm partly loving Acerbi on the other side. When I, when I see his face, he looks like a uh, little bit like a thug. I mean, he fits for me this Italian fighter uh, image 
And I think he fits very well with at least my idea of, of what Lazio stands for quite well. I'm not saying anything uh, that he, 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 he is a good defender. Uh, and for me, he is very much uh, a Lazio player. But every, every time I see it, he looks rough. He definitely looks rough. Uh, anyway, he gets the ball, the hand here, gets the ball here. Uh, penalty initially given, then they look at it at the bar and yeah, I understand why it was taken back. Um, fortunately, just two minutes later, um, Milan gets another penalty and this time Musaki was really uh, a tackle like in ice hockey uh, to earn a penalty and I have to say, I know that Cassia is a safe shooter but I've rarely been as nervous before a penalty of Milan's because I knew there's a lot riding on this game it's an absolutely important win this was a must win scenario actually for both teams and for that reason I don't understand well Lazio was taking it so slow yes they have a game in hand which if they get the draw they can draw level with Milan uh, on points but uh, it didn't feel quite right that Lazio was so tentative in that game especially in the second half Cassie slots it home and it was largely safe. Yes, Lazio then tried a little bit, but there was not really a big chance any, any, anymore. In fact, uh, Milan should have made it too. I mean, um, Cutrone came on uh, for Piontek, who got tired. And then again, two um, injury replacements. That's, that's what more bothers me more. Romagnoli out with an injury, uh, Calabria out with an injury. Um, Zapata, on the other hand, who came in for uh, Romagnoli, suddenly showed up in the box and was weaving around and put the ball to Piontek, almost uh, went in if it wasn't for a save by Strakosha. But yeah, uh, Milan was the better team in the second half. I think there was hardly anything coming from Lazio. Um, not that I felt super safe, because I know there was always a lucky punch in there. It was the same thing when they played in Rome. But on the other side, Lazio is the one opponent where when Milan plays Lazio, I expect a Milan win. Even if Lazio is playing well, uh, Milan has Lazio's number. And I heard the last time that Lazio won at the San Siro was in 89, own goal Maldini. I mean, that's a horror streak. That's uh, 30 years. 30 years of pain. And there's a cup semi-final coming up, but they are 1-1 for Lazio, would see them through, so gonna see that. So yeah, I'm relieved. It was not a great performance, it was a solid performance by Milan, but uh, I'm happy. They're back to winning ways and it was necessary because Roma won in the afternoon. I only saw the second half uh, really uh, with some, um, how to say, <laughs> pudding. Uh, my attention to that game. Um, it was raining cats and dogs in there and I thought oh, I've never seen that there had much rain uh, at a game in Rome. Uh, Udine had chances in the first half, I heard at least. Roma really controlled and dominated the second half. Yes, the weather didn't help but the goal by Dzeko was nicely played and it, I never had the feeling that Udine is going to do anything there. Uh, again, uh, two teams in first choices playing each other looked quite nice. Um, Roma got the win, that put Milan on, uh, under pressure. So, because uh, they leapfrogged Milan, now they're point uh, behind again. Lazio is at the moment six points behind Milan, uh, but have a game in hand. So, you know, and Atalanta plays Empoli Monday evening. If they get the win, they're level on points with Milan again. It's a really, really tight race. If Milan wouldn't have this bad string of results. And I think mostly the Udine and the Sampdoria game are the ones that I bemoan the most. Uh, I think you can lose against Sampdoria, um, but you cannot then not win against Udine. And what's more, um, you should have gotten a draw at Juve. Um, speaking of which, Juve could have become champions last weekend. Everyone thought with a win, they will get the win today. They didn't. They lost. They got the early goal through Moise Kien which I, I, I actually haven't seen that goal. Uh, Spal turns it around the second half and I gotta say the Stabian and Spal, when they pull a little bit back and you see the uh, Italian villas behind it, it looks cool. It, it's old-fashioned. Uh, so Spal wins against Juve. I 
think still that um, let's see I still think if Napoli doesn't win tomorrow then Juve is champions but uh, it's not the nicest way of uh, celebrating a championship if you just lost of course you play the second string team of course all the eggs in the basket are for the game against Ajax next Tuesday so I understand uh, they wrap up the championship anyway sometime soon so I saw a lot of Italian stuff um, a little bit Spain I saw most of the second half of Uesca Barcelona again I was playing with uh, uh, my daughters and um, my wife we were playing a game uh, but I saw a little bit of Uesca Barcelona but it was you know, yes Barcelona don't dominate but there was hardly any chances it was what I expected Barcelona also playing more or less a second string team no Messi um, it just yeah get it over with uh, that game Wesker gets a point uh, it ends nil nil uh, it was noteworthy Barcelona of course again in the pink jerseys uh, which is funny because uh, Monday a week ago I showed this pink jersey in the actual jersey to my wife I said this would be the if there's a pink jersey that I will ever get that's the nice one it's not because I like Barcelona in pink but I really like this graphic on, on there with um, having good diagonal and so on um, and it's a team that I sort of like where I can imagine a pink jersey I mean pink is not totally out of the color scheme for Barcelona uh, they have crazy colors anyway but she said this is orange and yeah we were discussing today is it really orange because to me it looks pink and she said ah, it's light orangey pink yeah if, they, if you make it very light those two colors can look similar but this is pink flamingo pink I cannot see so so that one I didn't see anything uh, I saw Atletico Madrid winning against Celta uh, Espanyol against Alaves 2-1 and I saw the last five minutes of the Seville Derby I knew it was 1-0 at halftime but that actually was quite exciting at the end it was 3-2 I just moved over I mean uh, there was a fight between players uh, uh, after Milan Lazio where I if I would have switched over I would have seen the Betis goal to make it 3-2 Betis was pressing there was even the goalkeeper of Betis at the very last minute coming there blocking the Sevilla goal goalkeeper the Sevilla goalkeeper it was crazy but um, they didn't get the equalizer and it 3-2 um, other games I didn't see much I saw that Manchester United won against West Ham 2-1 uh, through two Pogba penalties and uh, Southampton beats Wolves 3-1 so that's a big one and Spurs also 4-0 against Huddersfield but that was a must win and the other thing I want to mention uh, is that Dortmund is back to winning ways again 2-1 against Mainz not a great win but for now they are ahead of Bayern again Gladbach also gets a win 1-0 at Hannover which is basically a must win so but we'll talk about Germany in the big roundup that I'm planning again for Monday hopefully posting on Tuesday so we'll see how that will go anyway that was my day today tomorrow is dominated totally by Liverpool Chelsea uh, I'm gonna see if there's anything else I want to see I think the most interesting other the Seville Derby was the same time as Lazio middle Lazio so that one I would have loved I think there's not much in La Liga uh, to really look forward to or was there one let's quickly see mm -hmm. Ah, the Valencia derby. Yeah, okay, okay. Might Valencia against Levante could get convinced to watch that one. But yeah, tomorrow Premier League is is well of all I'm gonna watch. Um, Liverpool Chelsea is a must. Uh, Palace Manchester City I don't expect much, but you know Palace was there was something there was something. Okay, anyway, let me know. Uh, if you watched any, any, any games, if yes, uh, what do you think about those? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these uh, videos, my personal reviews, or you know, I just posted a video about this jersey, or other jerseys in my collection. And yeah, I'm working on some other stuff too, so I hope it stays interesting. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe.
And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.